All right, so let's look at some of the exceptions to the octet rule. The first one is found in boron, um, which has three valence electrons and is very, very, very small. It is the first thing that has three valence electrons in it. Because of that and because of its size, it can make structures that only have six electrons in them. It does not have to go all the way to the eight for the uh, octet rule. Um, however, when you pair this next to something like ammonia, it gets very, very jumpy to get to this, and it wants to form a bond there. So you would actually see something like this happen. Um, while this molecule is stable, it will, and it likes to, it, it is explosively reactive with something that has a lone pair that it can make another bond to, to fill its octet with. So it can happen here, but it like if it does, be ready for fireworks. Um, if you get something with a lone pair like water or ammonia uh, next to it. The other side is when you exceed the octet rule. Um, so if I have something like uh, sulfur hexafluoride, which is a very stable compound, you can breathe it in, that's what drops your voice really low. The Lewis dot structure for this is actually going to be, sulfur is the only one that's big enough to uh, have, or that forms more than one bond, and in this case it will form six bonds. Well, how do I know that this is going to happen? Well, number one, for what I said, that uh, it is the only one that forms more than one bond. Fluorine will never form more than one bond. Number two, we add up all of our electrons. Sulfur has five electrons. Fluorine has nine, uh, seven electrons, and I have six of them. So altogether, I will have 48 electrons here. So I can go through and say, okay, well, here's eight, and there are six of them, so that's 48 electrons. So I know that this structure is what my formula is going to call for. Why can this happen? Now? Well, sulfur is in the third period of the periodic table, right? So it has a quantum number, n, of 3. So it can fill the 3s the 3p and the 3d orbital. Okay, this is also in that same general area. So we can have two electrons here for our sulfur, six electrons here for my sulfur, and then up to ten more. Here we're going to fill in four more to get this to, to balance, but I can now access my d orbital. Um, so that's why this can form these bigger compounds. Let's look at a couple more and uh, try to piece these together. If I have PCl5, well, Cl is, it can form, it's uh, big enough to form more than one bond, but P works a lot better. It's the one that wants more um, bonds naturally. So we'll put P in the middle with my five Cls around it. and then we'll put on our lone pairs and we'll add all this up so I've got five for my phosphorus and seven times five so I've got to have forty valence electrons and eight times five is forty so that one works right there Okay, last one, uh, I3 minus, that's going to be 21 electrons plus 1 because I have a minus charge, so 22 electrons. I have to essentially build it like this. There's really no other option um, to build this. So I will uh, start there. I've got 2 electrons, 4 electrons, 6, 8, 10. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, with the negative charge on it. Okay, so we keep on going. Uh, the reason I put it in the middle is just because um, 
the middle is where the inconsistency is anyways it's gonna it already had two bonds which iodine doesn't usually like so I'm gonna be accessing my D block anyways there so I'll just continue accessing my D block there and so that is the exceptions to the octet rule